All right, so in the vise today, we've got an Arex PR380. Uh, this is their Texas Predator hook in a 5 aught And this is a, you know, a fly tying hook that's very similar to a lot of the um, Texas rig style hooks that are used in conventional fishing. And so this pattern is kind of my attempt at trying to recreate the famous Texas rig uh, with a fly rod. And a Texas rig is... You know, very effective. It's weedless, um, and it's just a great pattern. You know, through the spring, summer, and fall months. So we're gonna use some black Vivas thread. Any black thread you want to use will work for this. And we're gonna lay thread wraps along the entire shank of the hook, and even all the way down the bend of this. And it gets a bit tough as you know you get down past the the bend, the thread wants to keep slipping. Just go ahead and get those on there nice and snug. And a lot of the you know crayfish crawdad patterns in the fly world are you know, kind of a match the hatch type of deal. You know, they got the red and the orange, some blue hues, and they kind of just really closely resemble what a lot of the crawdads, you know, look like out there in the wild. But I've noticed that in the conventional world, some of the most popular colors are, you know, blacks, blues, you know, even some purples, things like that. And I've had a lot of luck throwing a black and blue crawdad on a, uh, you know, Texas rig. Just lay a nice, nice base there. And what we're gonna do to keep this thing weedless is we're gonna throw in a weed guard with some 20 pound mono. I'm using just Maxima Ultra Green, but any 20 pound mono will work. You can even go heavier. It wouldn't go much lighter. And just secure that mono on top of the hook shank and secure it all the way back down past the bend you know, kind of like halfway down the hook gap it's going to keep to hold it it's going to help to keep it you know where we want it to be um, and you don't need to you know you don't need to make sure this thing is super secure you know, there's no need for any kind of glue or UV to hold this in place because it's not weight bearing. You know, it's just there as a weed guard. Kind of from the first bend of the hook all the way down to, you know, halfway down the hook gap, I'm going to make that look really nice and clean because that will be a bit exposed and I doubt if it's going to have much of an effect on whether or not this pattern triggers a bass to eat, but one our fly is looking good where we can. So next I'm going to take some ice dub in uh, steely blue. And we're going to put a little dubbing ball right there at the first bend of the hook. And with this ice dub, got to kind of really just twist it up on your thread. It's kind of made up of a lot of, you know, just straight fibers. We want it to be in a dubbing ball and not, you know, not so hairy. Just go ahead and give yourself a nice fat dubbing ball there. And this is going to be used to help our claws help them to splay out. And this is a trick I learned from some of Hogan Brown's flies. 
and uh, kind of using a you know something with a blue hue there I think looks pretty natural and kind of just triggers those bass when they see those claws splay out they get that little bit of contrast there so again get a nice fat dubbing ball that's going to help to spread those claws out for the claws we're going to use some black rabbit strip and like I said I really you know I'm surprised how well it works but the black and blue craw crawdad you know soft plastics you know are kind of king in the conventional world in some areas and I think those colors are kind of underutilized in the fly fishing world when it comes to bass flies um, another trick I've learned from Hogan is to keep the claws much shorter than you would think this is going to help them to kind of stay standing up especially with these vertical flies you know you want them to splay out and not kind of droop over themselves so keeping them you know long enough to get the job done but nice and short will help kind of keep them rigid and you know just staying splayed out in the water so we're gonna throw you know a claw on each side we want them to be matching let's go ahead and flip the fly over get it fairly even and I don't go too crazy here I mean I don't know if you've run into this but a lot of the crawdads out there in the wild actually have you know one claw that's you know much bigger or much smaller than the other claw and that's because they often lose them you know while fighting down there protecting themselves and they grow back but you know, they grow back at you know different rates and they don't always end up the same size as the original claw so now we've got two claws kind of spread out there around the dubbing ball make sure those claws are in there nice and tight Then we're gonna take an EP minnow brush. This one is in black with, uh, it's got some kind of UV blue fibers in there and even some, some red fibers in there as well. And I think that kind of color combo is perfect when imitating a, a crayfish. And you know, I've seen occasionally, you know, all blue crayfish out there. They're far more rare than the, you know, kind of traditional red, orange, brown crayfish. So I'm not entirely sure the theory behind why these black and blue, you know, crawfish soft patterns work so well when fished on a, you know, Texas rig or a Ned rig, but they certainly do a good job of triggering bass to eat. So we're going to wrap that EP minnow brush all the way to the front of the fly and you continually want to keep guiding those fibers towards the claws, you know, towards the hook gap. As you wrap this brush forward. And when throwing kind of a Texas rig with a fly rod, you know, it's not going to be the easiest casting. It's very heavy, but you really don't need to bomb it out there. You don't have to have perfect accuracy. You know, it's a finesse rig, so you're you can cast it out there on a short floating line and just really methodically work it back and Kind of force those fish to strike at it. And I'm tying this weightless. You know, you're going to add a tungsten worm weight on the leader just above the fly. And this, you know, tying it weightless will allow you to. Kind of mix and match different sizes of 
tungsten weights, you know, based on the water you're fishing and the rod you're fishing and even the species of fish you're chasing. So next we're going to take some of these, now these rubber legs, these are the crazy legs in black and blue. You know, these are kind of what we use for squid row patterns and I see them on redfish flies and things like that. You know, it's essentially the fly tying version of a spinner bait skirt. And so we're going to tie these in. We're going to keep them nice and short uh, because this pattern is going to be sitting on its head. And we don't want these to fall over themselves. We kind of just want them to stay splayed out. I do want to get the contrast of the blue moving into the black. So I'm going to just take a bunch there. I'm going to put a loose wrap. We can kind of work the the legs around. And actually what we want to do first is trim off most of the black to where we're just getting a bit of contrast. Like I said, I want to keep those nice and short, so kind of do what you feel is best there. And again, kind of the same philosophy as the uh, claws. You know, if they stay, if they get too long, they'll just droop over themselves. So if you keep them nice and short and rigid, you'll still get the action of them and they'll kind of move the way you'd like them to. And using these rubber leg skirts is always kind of a messy business as far as making it look nice and clean, but we are going to cover all that up with some more minnow brush. Just tie that in nice and good. Clean it up a little bit, kind of separate the legs and give yourself an even amount around the shank of that fly. Then we're going to take our minnow brush again, same color. Feel free to mix and match any colors you'd like to. I mean, I think if you take a look at you know, any of the conventional fishing shops, you know, you walk down the aisle and take a look at just the variance in the colors of all the soft plastics that are available, you'll quickly realize just how many color combinations can be effective in getting bass to, to eat. Same thing with this minnow brush, continue to work it back towards the back of the fly. Be a little bit more diligent with that as we get towards the head of the fly. When you feel like you've got enough of a head, go ahead and tie the brush off. Try to keep your thread out of those fibers. Trim the brush off. Pull it all back and give yourself a nice clean head. And again, none of this has to be perfect. I mean, this is a pattern where we're getting down and dirty over some warm water species. And I think it's more about, I think it's equally about getting them, you know, kind of in that predatory response mode rather than getting them to you know take a look and be a picky eater you know they're going to see this thing and for lack of a better word you're going to piss them off and eventually they're going to strike it so we're going to go ahead and whip finish that there um, i'm not going to add uv quite yet because we've got one more stage of this fly and then we can add some UV finish to the whole thing, make it nice and clean. These patterns are fished in 
kind of some gnarly water sometimes as far as the structure that you're targeting. So a couple of whip finishes and some UV never hurts to keep this thing from falling apart on you. And with these, um, these Texas Predator hooks or, you know, any of the Gamagatsus or conventional style hooks that are used for Texas rigs, you'll see kind of this odd bend right at the eye of the hook. That's essentially where you would thread the soft plastic worm or crawdad or even salamander onto there. You know, so you kind of thread the, the head of the worm on there and then you're going to extend it down and tuck the point of the hook into the belly of that soft plastic. And that's what gives you that good action. That's what keeps it weedless and just a super effective rig. So we're going to use that kind of odd bend near the eye of the hook to secure our mono weed guard. And by no means is this as effective in keeping weeds off as, you know, traditional Texas rig where that actually the point of the hook is actually buried inside the plastic. You know, those are truly weedless. But I found this is good enough and kind of, you know, makes this rig effective, you know, when throwing it on a fly rod. So it's a little tricky, but I kind of thread the mono into the vise because what you want it to do is come right off the right off the bend of the hook and back towards the front of the fly. And when you're tying this thing off, you want to keep it tight enough that it's going to stay right where you want it and cover the point of that hook when it's going through weeds, but not so tight that you won't be able to, you know, get a purchase in on that hook set. You want it to essentially be able to cover and get you through weeds, but when a fish eats and you set, you want it to kind of just be just loose enough that that hook point can drive on home. Sometimes I'll use, you know, 30 pound mono for this. You probably even use 40 pound. I think anything lighter than 20 starts to get just too flimsy in keeping the, the weeds off the hook, but if you're tying these in a much smaller size, smaller mono might work for you. Like I said, get that thing secured, but it doesn't need to be bulletproof. You know, this is not a weight bearing. It's not like a trailer hook wire mono. It's just there to keep weeds off. And but at the same time, if that mono comes loose, this fly is kind of useless at that point you know, it really needs to be weedless when you're fishing a texas rig style let's go ahead and whip finish that off one whip finish is probably good there and then i'm going to take some uv fly finish in thin First, we're gonna lay a lay a nice head in front of the minnow brush. I'm gonna clean it up just a bit. Try to keep as many of those fibers as I can out of this UV head. But again, when you're targeting bass with a rig like this, it really doesn't matter. We're not matching a hatch or anything like that. So lay a fair amount of UV on there. And, you know, thick would work as well. I'm sure flow would work. This is really just to make it look a little nicer on the front, keep it nice and durable, and, and go ahead and bake that in. You could even take one of our UV fly finish, you know, in the colors, and kind of give a little hot spot there. But this end of the fly is the one that's going to be, you know, facing down. And it's going to stand, stand up on its head and have those, those legs in the air. And as they wiggle around, it's just 
too much for those fish to handle. Then go ahead and lay some, some more UV on the front of the fly where we've got the mono weed guard secured too. And bake that in. This pattern's worked really well for me on lakes, ponds, you know, the California Delta out here. And there are some amazing fly tires out there who are doing a really good job of imitating what the gear fishing world has been using for years. And it's kind of really interesting and exciting to see a lot of that stuff. So now kind of just give you a super quick overview on how to rig something like a Texas rig. Basically, you're going to take your, your leader, you know, whatever size you're using, probably going to be much heavier than what you'd use for a trout or anything like that. And the first thing you're going to do is thread on what's called a bobber stop. And you can use a toothpick instead of one of these, but I think these work really well. So take one of these bobber stops and thread it onto your leader little tricky at first but then you'll get the hang of it and it'll become easy and you're gonna take a worm weight and I like these black tungsten worm weights but they come in a variety of sizes and materials and even colors nowadays you're gonna thread that onto your leader that bobber stop is what's gonna keep it in place and you're gonna tie it onto your fly it's going to be a little bit tricky for me because, you know, I'm tying it, well, it's in the vise, but use whatever knot you'd like to. Um, a loop knot works well. Just a regular improved clinch works well. This thing's going to have a ton of action just based on the materials, but also the way that that tungsten worm weight you know, gets it moving. It's going to be sitting down on its head. When you strip, it's going to come up towards the surface and fall right back down. And while you're, you know, pausing in between strips, it's going to be sitting with its head down and its legs up. And it's just a really effective technique when targeting bass and especially where they're deep in cover, whether it's weeds or logs or rocks or whatever it is. So you're going to slide that tungsten weight and the bobber stop right down to the head of the fly. And like I said, it's not the prettiest rig, but some days it can be the most effective rig when you're out there targeting largemouth or smallmouth or whatever warm water species you have near you. And like I said, you know, floating line, the leader will be dictated, you know, the length of it by, you know, the depth of water you're fishing. But, you know, you don't have to worry about accuracy too much. Just get it in near that structure. You don't have to bomb it out there. You know, you can kind of sneak up on these fish, especially if you're in a boat or on the bank of a pond or anything like that. And cast it out there. It'll sink right to the bottom almost instantly. It'll be standing on its head and just give it little strips that'll draw it up and it'll fall back down. And I've heard people call the Texas rig, you know, the... The smoker's rig, you know, because guys, you know, would smoke cigarettes and they seemed to be more effective than the guys that weren't because they were just naturally working it slower. And, um, you know, I guess the point of that is just to work it very slowly. You're really trying to just drive these bass crazy, you know, by getting it down there in their home and just having a ton of movement down there. So, again, this fly is not for the faint of heart, but go ahead and. Try it on your local warm water and uh, should produce some, some eats for you. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.